when I'm 30, 35, I'm going to cut off my dreads, I'm going to grow my beard, and I'm going to go live somewhere in Saudi or something like that, raise my children in an Islamic country. Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to an episode about young ads. I know what you're thinking and no, he's not a junior maths whiz despite him promoting addition in his name. You're not funny. <laughs> you suck. The young'uns, especially here in England, the United Kingdom, that are listening to trap and drill music. In fact, most kids, I would say from a middle class to a lower class, is, this is a standard environment in school. You go, your friend's listening to it, or when it's free time in ICT, they're watching these videos, or someone's related or friends with someone that's in the rap scene, or someone's involved in gangs or whatnot. So it is your bog standard lifestyle here in the UK. Myself, I'm from South London. A lot of these rappers emerge from South, yeah? Your young ads, he's from Lewisham, South. Crepton Conan, Thornton Heath, South. Dave from Streatham, South. So for me, when I used to go secondary school, again, this sort of, although trap and drill wasn't particularly there, but again, you still had the grime and, and the rap scene there. People would be freestyling at lunchtime near the courts. Uh, we'd have police outside and there'd be gang issues. So, I mean, if you go to state schools, this sort of stuff is standard. The reason why I say this is because sometimes when we just say that kids listen to this sort of music, it's kind of, I think it's a bit unfair because we're making it seem like they have a choice. In, in some cases they do have a choice, but in most cases it's, it's the environment. It's the friends that are around you, the sort of culture that you're surrounded with, and that's what happens. So let's jump to young ads. I wanted to discuss young ads because I think the problem is that when it comes to troubled youth, it's very easy for us to say you don't listen or you don't, you know, respect your elders, that sort of stuff. But when we actually take the time to get to know them, what's pushing their buttons, what tries they're going through, it will help. Yeah, it will help in a more productive way. I mean, myself, we spent time living in Brixton for a while. I think my childhood, we lived in an estate. Yeah, my mom kept me with her. I mean, my thing was different to say Young Ads, as you're going to find out. All right, for those of you that don't know, Young Ads is a famous British rapper and he's part of Jada Kiss's European group called D Block Europe. Due to certain things that happened when he was young, my granddad died, my dad had to be out with my mum. My mum was going through a lot. His home environment was not the best and most conducive place for him to be. Just yeah, and I was on the block when I was seven. 1 a.m. on the block. Oldest telling me, go home, we dead. After this, he was asked why he was not at home at that age, to which he responds. Hey, nothing you want to see, guy, on this side. Nothing you want to see, guy, on this side, bro. Nothing. <laughs> So, I mean, you can see he's had a troubled beginning, yeah? And for those people that are watching, here the point that we can take is it's very important for us to make sure that we have a united household for our kids, especially if we are in lower class environments because it does have a big, big impact on them. Find out where your kid is, find out what they're doing, keep them with you, especially the early years. Thereafter, he started his trap life. For those uncles that are watching, trapping just means selling drugs. I just went back to being on the streets. You know, we started trapping. It's important that you're acknowledging that it is dumb shit. Dumb shit. Yeah. It's real dumb shit. Yeah. Getting in trouble with the police. So I'm on tag for a cunch case. I got bagged in Oxford in a Q7. So Young Ads has got a very close friend that he always keeps with him called LB. And LB's brother had a link with Jada Kiss, yeah, the famous. American artist and Jada Kiss really liked this young guy's talent and he wanted to sign him. He said, uh, I want to fly you out now. I'm like, I'm on tag. He's like, where? You, what, you trapping? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Stay out of the long reach of the federal law. But of course, initially balancing this whole rapping lifestyle with the trapping lifestyle, it was very difficult. See our thing with Kiss, bro. Yeah. This is what a lot of people don't understand. God forbid, bro. Allah forbid. I could go to jail tomorrow for 10 years. So could he. We'll come out yeah. and still be D-Block Europe. 
I think for a lot of people watching when they hear music Oh, it's haram brother, oh why, why you do this man, why? Each situation needs to be understood on its own merits. Somebody that's come from this lifestyle where they're doing where they're selling drugs, doing drugs, God knows what. Four hours, five hours, six hours, you're in a lean coma because you're waking up, you're drinking lean and you're just going straight back into it, straight back to sleep. For them to make this transition, for them it's progress. The work rate sure. is outrageous, outrageous. Now apparently you're sitting on like over 500 records. Yeah, more than that. It may not be progress to you, but you can't compare everybody using your own self as a metric like your upbringing is different to somebody else's your challenges are different and inshallah eventually the person will come around but then after this he made such a profound point but like you gotta think about what young are going through to wake up and want to go back to sleep so bro. yes exactly what causes a person in that lifestyle to want to numb themselves naturally it's pain when you go to the dentist, when you go to the hospital, before an operation, they numb you so you don't feel the pain. So if somebody is going to intoxicants, they are numbing something. So this is a brilliant segue into the long-term effects of this trapping gangster lifestyle. You see when you're a kid growing up, because we're growing up in the hood bro, you're, you're, psychologically you are getting f***ed up every single day. I mean this whole gangster and you know selling drugs and spoiling people's lives and spoiling your own lives and getting involved in gangs, this sort of stuff does leave a mark. And the sort of things that you and I take for granted, relationship with our parents, that's that's what a kid needs at the early years. My mum will tell you that there's a period of a year where she like she she's talking to me uh once every two weeks. She ain't even got a number for me. I mean, this is what this sort of lifestyle entails. Yeah, it breaks you up with the things that actually make you human to such a degree that you don't even feel human anymore. And I'm glad, alhamdulillah, he does have a counsellor as well. Yeah, sometimes uh, my counsellor said to me that, you know, I should... Oh, you got a counsellor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the young'uns that are watching, that listen to their music and that aspire towards them, Many of these guys, many of these guys will say in their interviews Don't look up to me or LB, please You see as people yeah, and I'm gonna look at the camera and say this If you want a role model, go to your local masjid, yeah? Go to your local mosque, yeah? Go get your good English media teacher, whatever and build a bond with him. I mean if their lifestyle was so good and so worth it, why would they be saying don't follow us? So naturally kids that come from this background and then they show interest towards the religion and the deen, they are not just going to go from zero to hero. You cannot expect a primary school student to understand the syllabus of somebody in university. It takes time, it takes nurturing, it takes understanding. Yeah. So if you are dealing with these people as a teacher or as a parent, understand them. Understand, look at what they're listening to, look at who they're hanging around, Yeah. have a picture. Because many a times if the parents too strict, the kid will present a different image to the parent and then outside they're doing something else. But if the parent has that sort of relationship, at least the kid's being honest and slowly wean the kid off that. I get certain parents, they're outside working, but I mean that comes at a price. I would say live in a smaller home, yeah, drive in less, eat less, but give time to your family. Because after these sorts of principles get instilled into them, it's a problem. When I'm 30, 35, I'm gonna cut off my dreads, I'm gonna grow my beard and I'm gonna go live somewhere in Saudi or something like that, raise my children in an Islamic country. And you mean inshallah. that? I mean that, inshallah. Yeah, he's been, he's been saying this, but it's... I hope, I hope mm. that brings you the happiness inshallah, that you're looking yeah. for. Yeah. But of course, like the clip at the start, what really got to me is that somebody that has the fame, that has the wealth. I see managers shopping on a regular, I'm, I'm on the ground like these men are taking the mickey out of this game. Coming from a seemingly jahil or you know a wild background, ignorant background, can still understand the purity of the Dean and realizes that you know what, this is temporary, they're gonna throw me away one day, I'm gonna throw me one day, yeah, cool still bro, it happens to everyone, they throw you away. That's why people lose their mind, because they fell in love with the power and thought it was forever. Because the guy has been in this lifestyle for a very long time, but yet 
somebody like him, if this religion was such a joke, why would people that are around beautiful women? I mean, another interview you were saying, you know, sometimes you're sitting with a 10 out of 10, but still, you know, you, there's stuff going on in your mind. Yeah, because true happiness comes from inside. And this is what Allah says, that if you forgo your purpose, if you forgo what you're actually here for and you forgo His remembrance, you will end up depressed, you will end up unhappy. And if you want true happiness, it is only in the remembrance of Allah, acknowledging, recognizing, obeying Allah, that your hearts will find satisfaction. Does that excuse young ads staying in this industry and leading more people astray? Of course not. But does it mean that we have to we can ignore whatever he's gone through to understand where he is now? I don't think that's right either. I should uh, use my uh, uh, music to you know express you know uh, a lot of uh, traumatic situations that I've been through. But of course there are other ways of expressing yourself as well. Um, that are more beneficial to your soul and spirit. Naturally, when you do haram, your hole gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, it's like quicksand. So you are gonna sink further and further. Let's say worst case scenario, you couldn't record for like a month. Do you know what I'll do? What I'll do to you? Yeah, I just gotta get higher for the month. If, because I have to be practical. Some people are still gonna listen to this sort of music, and I think my practical advice is balance it. If you are listening to say an hour of this, listen to an hour of positivity, an hour of Quran, lectures, yeah, speaking to positive people. If you apply too much heat to your left hand, then how do you counteract that? You need an equal amount of coolness to counteract that. Yeah. Let's leave it there, guys. Until next time. I can go out in the shop. I can like I can break down in tears right now and go to the shop to get tissue. I might bump into four fans. Oh my god, is that young lads? Yeah. I got a smile. Yeah. Take, take a picture. Take, take my picture. Your service. You're not a human. Your service. You're as good as a clown. Like your circus act. Salamu alaikum.